President Akio viewed the Prius as more of a commodity, but actually they wanted to change the image of hybrid vehicles uh, so, and make, make it more of an emotional car. So his fundamental thinking was different from the design development team, but they really wanted to work hard to make it a car that could be loved by its owners and by all. Oyo-san, I had the opportunity to drive your new car. Hmm. And I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting much because it's a Prius. Hmm. However, it is significantly different. Hmm. How were you able to make the change from the Prius, what everyone knows about a Prius, to this car? So first, I worked on two different aspects to improve the uh, dynamics of the car. And one of them was changing the powertrain, uh, which includes the power unit and the control system. So maybe that's why you felt such a big difference. How much of an impact did Akio Toyota have on this car, meaning this very significant change from the previous car to this car, mm -hmm. more so than other normal car changes? Mm -hmm. President Akio viewed the Prius as more of a commodity, but actually they wanted to change the image of hybrid vehicles uh, so, and make it more of an emotional car. So his fundamental thinking was different from the design development team, but they really wanted to work hard to make it a car that could be loved by its owners and by all. Was there a discussion between you and Akio Toyota mm. and the designers mm. Do we even need a Prius anymore now that there are many other cars throughout the entire Toyota and Lexus lineup mm. that are hybrids and plug-in hybrids? Mm. So yes, we, there was a lot of discussion on what to do with the future of the Prius. So one thing Akio did say was that the Prius is a very important vehicle to the brand. And so receiving that kind of comment from the president, we as the development team went through a lot of different ideas of how to, to move forward with the Prius. As a result of that, we felt that the role of the vehicle was to reimagine and give a new image to hybrid vehicles. Uh, and that's why we proceeded with the hybrid development. So what came first, Simon and design? Mm -hmm or you and engineering in making this change? Design was first. Was there a debate between engineering and design about how much you could push the design? Yes, of course there was. Uh, when the engineering team saw the initial design sketches, we immediately felt that we wanted to make this a reality. But the reality is there were a lot of challenges that we had to take on in order to, to succeed in that. And by clearing those individual hurdles, we felt that we were able to realize the final product of their initial design. So give me an example, maybe three examples of challenges mm -hmm. that that specific design presented mm -hmm. to engineering. Mm -hmm. One of the main points was the overall lowering of the vehicle height, the silhouette. So in order to make that a reality, we had to lower the positioning of the passengers in the vehicle. In order to make that possible, we decided to redevelop parts of the platform itself. So we also felt it was a big challenge to use larger diameter tires and wheels on the vehicle. Of course, there were many topics and issues with using larger diameter tires uh, when trying to recreate and to realize that design, but all the team members worked hard to make sure that that became reality. So one of the big challenges I'm hearing is lowering the frontal impact mm -hmm. on the air, the, basically the efficiency of the air around the car mm -hmm. was one of the biggest challenges. And a solution you came up with was something that was really made famous by the Mercedes-Benz 300 SL, which was putting the passengers lower and closer together. Mm -hmm. And you feel that in this car. Mm -hmm. Was there a debate between you and Simon or you and Akio Toyota mm -hmm. about the car, it, it doesn't have that practical car feel on the inside anymore, and is that something we aggressively want to go towards? So the role of the vehicle this time is to be much more of a sporty type uh, and a vehicle that can be loved uh, and really uh, bond with its owner. And so our thought process is that if a customer requires uh, more utility-based needs, uh, as Toyota, we would be able to offer them a wider variety of vehicles uh, so that it would cater exactly to their needs. So I feel that with this version, even though the utility aspect may have gone down slightly, 
we've actually received much more in new benefits and, and, we've, we've, and we've been able to achieve much more dynamic performance. And we really believe that being able to achieve this stylish design was one of the big achievements of this vehicle. It sounds as if you're changing the customer base. Because mm -hmm. people, if I'm honest, really do love the Prius, mm -hmm. but they're not car people. Mm -hmm. And it sounds as if you're making this more of a niche product for different, a different kind of buyer. Mm -hmm. Is that something that was a decision by the three of you, meaning Simon and mm -hmm. Akio and you, mm -hmm. or was that something that was driven by marketing and did some research? So we do believe that the market is evolving right now. And within that ever-changing market, we believe uh, that this new Prius will appeal to these new customers, uh, and it is something that we feel that they are looking for. So for the avoidance of doubt, Toyota as a company mm -hmm is seeing there really isn't a need for this standout hybrid anymore mm -hmm. because you can kind of scratch that itch mm -hmm. with a Camry hybrid, a Corolla mm -hmm. hybrid, a RAV4 hybrid. Mm -hmm. This now is trying to go in a completely different direction. Mm -hmm. is, is that what I'm seeing? Mm -hmm. So if we look at the future potential of hybrid technology and vehicles, then yeah, it would be incorrect in assuming that. And at Toyota right now, we have started this new movement of hybrid reborn and really trying to change and improve the image of hybrid vehicles. And we felt that only the Prius could take the lead uh, in this new movement. So right off the bat, anybody that looks at this will be like, wow, that's a completely different looking vehicle. Like yesterday, I was shooting the car and a guy in a Tesla drove past us and like, what is that? He like, had no idea what it was. And he was shocked that that was a Prius. And that's the first impression most mm -hmm. people have. But the thing that I would argue was a bigger change, mm -hmm. the brakes, the actual performance of the brakes. Mm -hmm. Not so much the feel, it's not like an on-off switch, which is good, mm -hmm. that you get in most hybrids and plug-in hybrids. This, the brakes, I'd almost go so far as to saying they're more performance-oriented mm -hmm. in a car that really is still a mm -hmm. hybrid. How did that come about? Mm -hmm. So the traditional development process at Toyota was each individual specialty team would develop their own uh, products and items and then at the end they would integrate it into the final product. So you just brought up the terms of brakes right now, but we believe with the braking system it's a series of events that lead to one action. But this time, with those series of events, one action would create multiple reactions, but every now division, every specialty team would take that into account and incorporate that into their own specialty items, and at the end of the day, it was much more of an integrated process of development. And as a result of that, the final operation is much more smooth and feels much more complete. So if I'm hearing this correctly, this is the first time where different groups within mm. Toyota knew mm. what the other one was doing, and they took that into account in their own development process. Why hasn't that been used at Toyota before? So that's a very difficult question. But for us up until now, we believe that as specialists, developing uh, and perfecting each individual item and then integrating it would create a very good car. But now that's not enough. So we adapted and we changed to make sure uh, that we could evolve with the, with the needs. So following on to that, another silo, which I noticed a difference. Mm -hmm. The inside of the car, it's, yeah, it's nicer. The design, beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, but beautiful. It's more functional mm -hmm. in a uh, better UX way, meaning mm -hmm. there's toggle switches, mm -hmm. there's a knob for the volume, mm -hmm. things that stand out that other cars in this segment don't have. But most importantly, the tactile feel has changed, mm -hmm. meaning it feels better on the inside, mm -hmm. better than a $27,000 car mm -hmm. should. Was that a result of this development mm -hmm. change, or are you just trying to make the car a little bit more upmarket mm -hmm. now? So first, there was a concerted effort to make sure that anything that the passengers would touch would feel better. And also, regarding the UX, uh, they made sure that the interior was much more functional uh, and appealing to the drivers. And was that a decision based on you being the chief engineer, or Simon, mm. or, or President Toyota? Mm. So we feel, and we would hope you understand, that it was really the desire of Team Prius, our team members, who, and their desire to make a better car. Uh, moving back outside the car, mm -hmm. one of the things that's, an, again, a noticeable difference, 
but you only really focus on it after spending some time mm -hmm. with the car. The wheel wells. Mm -hmm. If you look at the wheel wells of this design, they engulf the wheel more, they cover more of the wheel than any normal car, whether it's a performance car or not a performance car. It's almost as if, I kind of likened it in the episode, to the wheel wells of an AMG mm. GT. Mm. Is that something that was dictated by aerodynamics, mm. efficiency of the air on the car, mm. or was that something aesthetics that, say, Simon brought to the mm. table? So the overall design relationship of the fenders and the tires uh, were dictated through design initially. So, yes, so it was dictated by the aesthetics. Okay, so now let's step back. Let's understand your path to getting to be the chief engineer of what could be considered the flagship of the Toyota brand. What were you building before this? What were you doing? How did you get to this point? So before working on the Prius, I was actually working in charge of the Corolla. And before that, I was on the manufacturing side, working on the development, the initial development of this new Prius as well. And how many years have you been at Toyota? 2004, so it's been about 18 years. Okay, so now a little feedback. I drove the car, mm. and I was incredibly impressed. Is it a, like a Porsche 911? No. Mm. However, it is exactly what you'd expect a Prius to be, at least the way it drives, mm. and then there's aspect that you don't expect, like the very good braking performance. Mm. And to me it comes across as there was a lot, it was over-engineered, mm. which is a good thing. Mm. But that tells me, is there room for a Prius that potentially would have a GR badge, <laughs> perhaps with an inverter in mm. the back? Mm. perhaps with an integrated starter generator motor in the front mm. and better suspension. Mm. So currently we have no plans for that, but if the market demand and the needs are there, it's definitely something that I will look into. So this is the point of the episode where I think we should turn it around to the audience. Mm. Because the car I drove yesterday, I don't think it's a situation where you're going to wait for market feedback. I think the engineering is there. Mm to take some of the bits from like the hybrid max system of the crown and at least make this maybe not a performance car, but something that could be a touring car. Mm. So this is where we turn it around to the audience mm. and ask, is that something that one would be willing to pay for, for a Prius? Because the car now looks good. Do you want it to drive like a more performance oriented car? Kind of like the difference between the hybrid XLE crown and the hybrid max crown or the irx 500 and the rx 350. let us know in the comments below or via our social media moto man tv all word moto man tv all word and this is the man that actually could make it happen because he builds the car uh, and if you got value out of this episode please uh, share this with all of your friends on your socials and until we see you in the next episode be sure to <laughs>